A man from Essex is preparing to run a million metres to raise money for a Parkinson's disease charity. Richard Merry is a production manager at Tiptree Jam Factory. But in his spare time, while well, he's training to run the equivalent of two marathons a month for a year, raising a pound every metre, Martin Stew has been to meet him. As a production manager at Tiptree Jam Factory, Richard Merry is used to dealing in big numbers. Dozens of flavours, hundreds of ingredients and thousands of jars. But outside of work, he's gearing up for a physical challenge which will test his stamina as well as his maths. Richard's planning to run one million metres in a year. That's a thousand kilometres or the equivalent of a marathon a fortnight. It's all to support running friend Alex Flynn from Henley, who, aged just 37 and with two kids, was told he had Parkinson's disease. Now, together, they're hoping to raise a million for the Cure Parkinson's Trust, one pound for every metre run. People with Parkinson's are still using drugs that are 40 years old. There's, they need to sort of carry on the research and try and get more up-to-date medicine um, and try and find a bigger cure, as I say, because they're, they're using stuff which is, which is decades old now. This year, both of them took on the Marathon de Sable, five and a half marathons across the Zahara Desert in just six days. Sadly, Alex had to pull out because of his illness. And Richard says his biggest challenge this year will be staying race fit. We'll be using some of the shorter races actually as train, as, almost as a training run, um, if you can class the London Marathon as a training run. It's going to be a case of a, a balance between doing the running, doing the training and, of course, family and work life as well. The two are hoping to finish the year by qualifying for the Spartathlon in Greece, an epic 151 miles in just 35 hours qualify or not, you can't help but be impressed by their Herculean fundraising efforts. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Tiptree. And good luck to him. Well, last Friday we told you about Bo the missing eagle owl. Well, there's been some good news. Falconers David and Jane, who live in Akel in Norfolk, have spent a week driving across the county trying to find their missing four-year-old owl. Yesterday, he was spotted. He was in a nearby tree and was coaxed down. I've had a week of looking up in trees, my neck, I just, I cannot believe that we have finally found him. When we finally heard yesterday that he was actually seen, we were ecstatic. A Norwich pub has won a top award in the new edition of the Good Pub Guide. The Fat Cat in Norwich has been declared the Beer Pub of the Year for the fourth time in ten years. The pub, which has previously been voted National Pub of the Year by camera, was described as a place of pilgrimage for beer lovers. The guide also praised the tremendous enthusiasm of owner Colin Keatley. Now, we all know about the courage of our troops sent to serve in war zones such as Iraq and Afghanistan, but there's one team of well-trained recruits whose work goes almost unnoticed. RAF police dogs and their handlers play a vital role at home and abroad. And over the past four days, they've been put through their paces at the force's national trials at Henlow in Bedfordshire. Anna Pettifer reports. Air dog Ben, RAF Lossiemouth. Air dog Argin. RAF Lynham, Air Dog Eero, RAF Lossiemouth. Some of the most valued recruits to the RAF police. Here at the UK Dog Trials at RAF Henlow to show off some pretty impressive manoeuvres. All the scenarios we adopt here we're taking back from theatres of Iraq and Afghanistan. And young uh, personnel, not long out of training, we can introduce scenarios to them so we gradually build them up for a uh, in, uh, an operational uh, footing uh, and when they're in theatre it's not a major shock to them. The air dogs take part in a series of exercises including crowd control, demonstrating skills they're expected to use on operation overseas. Corporal Samantha Williams and her dog Shadow will soon be deployed to the Falklands. Shadow loves the man work side of things the most. He loves apprehending intruders, he loves, he loves the bite generally, and he gets great re reward from that. If we're doing any other type of training, like hangar searches or anything like that, um, we always tend to give him a bite afterwards because that's his reward, that's what he loves. Shadow may enjoy his work, but this aggressive crowd soon find out his bite may be worse than his bark. 
To be able to use dogs in situations like these is vital to the RAF police. Each dog and team roughly take nine. If there wasn't there, we'd have to put nine guards out. Uh, and if you've got five dogs on an area, uh, that's 45 guards you've got to find. And you've got to find another 45 guards to relieve them so they can go for breaks, rest and whatever. So the ma saving in manpower is phenomenal. There was also a chance to see an RAF sniffer dog in action, searching out hidden explosives. This week may have just been a competition, but the task ahead for these dogs is very much for real. Hannah Pettifer, Anglia News, RAF Henlow in Bedfordshire. Incredible stuff, isn't it? You just don't think about animals being sent over to Absolutely. places like Iraq and Afghanistan. It's incredible what they can teach them. It is. Now, maybe it's the generation gap, but every now and then... Grandchildren just get a little bit fed up with their grandparents. So when Zoe Pemberton, who's from Clacton, found her nan Marion was getting on her nerves a bit, well, she decided to do something about it. Now, what would you do about it? Ooh, well, this is what she decided to do. <laughs> she put her up for sale on eBay. And there was plenty of interest, as Natalie Gray reports. The loving relationship between a granddaughter and her nan. But Zoe and Marion don't always see eye to eye. Do you don't like it? And after being asked to make one cup of tea too many, this ten-year-old came up with a cunning plan. Oh, she's moaning, she's annoying, she tells you what to do, and I wanted her to put, I wanted to put on eBay and see what's going to happen. So Zoe posted a listing on the website describing Marion's favourite food, hobbies, and the fact that she was cuddly and enjoyed word searches. She's asking me about my food, what I like, curry, Chinese and English, but she put curry down. And then she said, what drink do you like? Tea and coffee. And then it went ridiculous. 99 pence, a five, £7.50, and it went to £25. In fact, there were 27 bids. The highest was £2,050. Zoe's dad, Thomas, didn't realise his daughter was taking it so seriously. I didn't think that she would press confirmed to eBay. I didn't think she'd do that. I thought it was on a bit of a joke, really. They get on with each other one day and they don't the next day. It just, it just all depends, really. The listing has now been removed from the website and a spokesman said, well, no doubt Mrs Goodall would have fetched a princely sum, eBay does not allow the listing of any human being on the site. Mind you, we were impressed to see a total of 27 bids for the lady in question. Thankfully, Marion and Zoe are still on talking terms. Well, I'm not being sold, so it's all right. It's been took off now, so I'm quite happy about it. Zoe's actions have created a lot of media attention, and there's one thing Marion needs to know. Well, would you actually assault me? If, you could, if there was a chance to sell me, would you assault me for 99 pence? Or £2,000? Seems like Zoe's keeping quiet about her answer. Natalie Gray. Anglia News. Oh, totally <laughs> I think that's brilliant. 27 <laughs> bids on her. I found it so funny, though, that she was asking Graham what she likes for dinner. So you'd know what to give Marion, wouldn't you? Absolutely. And uh, I think there's one or two people up in the newsroom that perhaps we ought to put onto eBay. We wouldn't get very much for them, though. Certainly not Rachel Mackley, though. Here she is with the weather.